Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Bell & Howell Tack Light Pro Extreme. So I guess Bell & Howell's had these tack lights around for at least five years. It's actually made by a company called Emson. And there is a surprising social media and YouTube presence. Uh, really kind of taken aback by how many YouTube reviews there are of this light. Some of them with hundreds of thousands of views. A lot of them pretty glowing, almost, you know, seeming a lot of promotional videos. Emson also has their own video where they talk about all sorts of stuff, including it's how it's tactical or similar to tactical lights, and we'll discuss that too. Really, this thing's a piece of junk. Do not buy it. They retail on the shelves. It's $20. There, It's all over Amazon, sold at Home Depot. Stay away from this thing, really. First off, suspiciously, on the packaging, no mention of the actual lumens anywhere. The only thing, even online, is 100,000 hours of life, and there's no way you're going to warranty that. They do offer a lifetime warranty. However, it's pretty egregious. You get a big free lifetime replacement, and then send the product, and $9.95, 10 bucks. the thing was 15 bucks. Or, I mean, the thing was $20 retail on the shelf, so it's going to cost you $15 to take advantage of the warranty. Just a bit ridiculous. It is Chinese-made. And then the box caught my attention here. Terms and conditions, agreement to arbitrate, apply. I've never seen that on a hard product. A hard product is something physical like this. Uh, flashlight tools, you know, pretty much whatever you buy. Soft products tend to be software, intellectual property, such as movies, music, etc., what on earth? I did a little looking around. A couple years ago, uh, Samsung lost a Federal Circuit Court of Appeals, and the Supreme Court turned down the appeal, which was, on hard products, there has to be some kind of indication on the box that there is an arbitration agreement that you do agree to by opening or using the product. If they don't tell you that on the box, then the arbitration agreement doesn't bind. Arbitration agreements are egregious because it's, you know, it's like kind of private courts. You don't, you know, if you really are injured by a product and you think on a flashlight, it doesn't matter. But there's something, a suspicious defect on this product. And it's funny that it has a very sharp edge on it where none of these other flashlights I'm going to talk about have that type of issue. They all properly made sure that all the edges are, have been deburred enough where they're not going to be able to cut somebody. And I think it's weird, like they, this company spent a bunch of money on social media promotions and then they have this arbitration agreement on, you know, you can't do class action lawsuits, arbitration agreements, or like private courts. And oddly enough, they include a copy of the arbitration agreement in the physical product. Never seen that before. And I mean like high performance lithium ion uh, hobby chargers, no arbitration agreement, you know. DeWalt lithium-ion tools, part of Stanley Black & Decker, the world's largest tool manufacturer, no arbitration agreement. Computer hardware, like this U.S. Robotics modem that I upload all my YouTube videos with. I'm just kidding. I don't use this to upload YouTube videos. No arbitration agreement. So it's really out of place on a flashlight. Part of the worst part about the arbitration agreement and their private nature is uh, in the United States, if you have a lawsuit or, you know, federal or whatever, you sue in the court that's nearest to you in whatever state that you live in. Arbitration, no. They can do something where they can dictate, because you agreed to that agreement, exactly where in the country you're going to do it. So if you do choose to arbitrate because maybe your kid got cut because it's a flashlight, you wouldn't be keeping it in the safe. It would be in a utility drawer and in your car. And they didn't deburr or super sharp edge right there with just under a little elastic band and your kid cut themselves you're gonna have to end up going right here you know claim or dispute shall be conducted in new york county new york state you're gonna have to pay for the expense of going to new york to arbitrate so it's totally obscene the performance is uh just basically subpar let me talk about that sharp edge this is a pretty thick hard piece of plastic sharp enough edge where it's rolled over to where we can really catch plastic on many areas and start to get it to come up on some spots on the edge of this ring and the reason it's a big deal is because your kid will get a hold of this or somebody will grab it and probably there's going to be issues with other ones that are going to be even sharper and 
are just going to really want to cut somebody. You shouldn't be able to have like a piece of plastic like this be able to catch on these edges quite so easily and uh, want to tear like that. None of these other flashlights I could do that with this piece of plastic and it's not really the easiest thing to tear. It's not the best example. This is when they machined it, the, the lathe tool came across, it pushed over a little sharp lip of aluminum and uh, they never cleaned it up and they, it doesn't appear that they tumbled this or deburred it. How this thing works, we should demonstrate it. I'm going to tear it apart at the end of this review. Is It's a linear zoom. It slides. I don't like these because it's hard to get them into a specific intermediate uh, position. I would say it's about 100 lumens. If we compare it to the normally $15, but you can always use a coupon, Harbor Freight 588 lumen zoomable flashlight, we can see that it is much, much dimmer. And I can see why they didn't advertise the lumens because it's only average brightness, not $20 flashlight brightness. It has a lower mode, which is hard, uh, a medium and a low, which is hard for the camera to see. It has an advertised disorientating strobe. I'll show the issue with this strobe. It's going to be kind of complicated because of the video shooting at 30 frames a second. But this is not a tactical strobe. It is too low of a frequency. It's not flashing fast enough. And then it has a computerized uh, SOS Morse code. And then you have your little cob light. So a cob light is just a whole bunch of little LEDs integrated on the one circuit board. And it has a high, a low, and then it has this flashing red cob, which is like, you know, eight or ten little red LEDs. And then finally off. One of the issues, there's been a lot of negative reviews, and I can kind of understand why. This little ring here wasn't very tight, and it didn't have an O-ring an to seal this front part. Some reviews didn't mention that water came out. People were, like, freezing these or putting these in a pot of boiling water for, you know, a few seconds. Any, any flashlight will do that. The Harbor Freight Free flashlights will do that, just the blue plastic ones. And they're not even water-resistant. So this flashlight, because it has all these different modes and two different LED elements to control, it has a, you know, a power controller and an electronic circuit down here, and it responds to pulses of the power switch turning on and off. But this is a soft switch, which means that it's like, you know, your TV or something like that. There's always a little bit of electricity being used from the battery so that it can monitor the soft touch switch. It's not a mechanical. That's a mechanical switch that's physically turning on and off the light. This is a software switch. It's just a simple button, like so. One of the issues I was getting to earlier is people complain about batteries really draining fast, and I can see why. You know, if you use it, you may forget. You just turn off the light like that. And, of course, this thing is blazing under there. That ring barely glows. That's all you really see, and that's on one side. And so I'm sure people are ending up putting it away with that light going and just killing the batteries. Runs on three uh, AAAs. They don't mention anywhere how long they you should expect it to last in any of the modes. Quite suspiciously, everybody, even Harbor Freight and all their quantum lights, with coupons, you can get this Harbor Freight cob light, which is better than the one that's integrated into this and certainly much heavier duty. And the 600 lumen 4 AAA zoom light for less money than you can get this thing for. And at least Harbor Freight doesn't falsely advertise tactical and doesn't make you agree to crazy arbitration contracts. And you want something, you know, and I just happen to have a lot of Harbor Freight flashlights. This, the big 3D cell quantum light, which is like over 500 lumens for a focus beam, well, this can't even come anywhere close to this, and this being 3D cells will last over 20 hours on full brightness. Speaking of all the modes, it is electronically controlled, but they're using like a weird circuit in the back in combination with the circuit in the front, and the circuit in the back is kind of making this switch appear to the circuit in the front like you're, it's a mechanical switch that you're half-pressing. The Harbor Freight does that where you have a mechanical switch. It turns on, and then you can partially press it 
the switch between the modes and if you ever want to turn it off you just mechanically turn it off this is simulating that half press but there is like no long press to turn it off if we turn it on and press and hold this button nothing happens every single time we want to turn it off we've got to go through all these different modes really pretty annoying about that tactical if it's gonna anything's gonna use the name tactical and have these diameters on something like a flashlight then those diameters ought to follow some type of standard there's a series of different ring size standards for mounting this in a tactical way one of the most common would be say one inch very common size this is 1.025 inches then that is not an even size in metric or fractional and we can see obviously this does not seat down properly you can see light under it that means it's going to get all bent and contorted going to crush that barrel it's not meant to be mounted in any form whatsoever things that really are supposed to be mounted say is this little maglite xl 150 or one inch and so when you put them on these types of adapters it fits nice and snug Furthermore, the knurling that say is on the battery cap here and around the front has been rolled flat so that even where it's knurled, it is also one inch. And let's take a look at that strobe. The strobing is designed to, you know, it's a personal protection strobe. How does that work? It's supposed to flash a bright light at actually a pretty specific frequency. There are certain frequencies, you know, rates of turning on and off a light. Which, causes, which has the maximum effect of causing somebody to not have as keen a sense of direction. It's called disorientation. Secondly, that rate of flashing is optimized so that in a dark environment, somebody's eyes will adjust to a bright light, and then when the, fla when it, the flashing goes to the off position, the human eye cannot adjust, readjust, open the pupils fast enough before the light flashes again. So essentially what the subject sees is a bright flashing white light against a completely black background. That's what would happen in a dark, you know, a really dark environment or a dark room or a real dark night. But it is a specific rate. And, you know, even the Harbor Freight is the same as this Bell, Bell and Howell. If we can get it. And you can kind of get the effect of the rate. It's the same rate on this thing. There's the rate on this. There's the rate on the mag light. The bell and howl. The mag light. Once again. And I think you can pick that up on the camera. So the strobe rate is too slow and has a diminished effect. I don't like these linear zooms such as this iProtec. I really like how it's a screw type zoom so that when you set it in a particular position, it actually stays in that position. There's also honesty issues. Uh, the range of this light is a bit more than this iProtec as far as the wide and narrow zooming, but it's not 50 fold. But there's a real honesty issue because the iProtec is honest, one to four times zoom. This is somehow magically one to 200 times. That would be a four, 50 top fold increase in range, and that's simply not true. The whole tactical thing we know is not true. One of the biggest issues also with this light, and we'll demonstrate that here, is the fact that inside there, and we actually happen to have some flashlights handy, you can see that it's just a circuit board with a little pad. The same thing as this here. And so what ends up happening is these hard terminals on the battery end up wearing and grinding just wherever the sharp point is right through that thin printed pad and then you have connection issues and people are talking about the flashlight changing modes and shaking and it just constantly turns on and off and all sorts of weird stuff that is caused due to that bad conduct or that bad connection and you get an issue like this where it kind of pulses and just causes a little bit of electrical interference and causes the flashlight to arm, detect that as you hitting the button and change modes. Surprisingly enough, all the Harbor Freight Quantum flashlights use a spring in the battery cap and a spring down the bottom. So whether they use a cartridge or like these here where it just uses, you just insert straight cells, the whole battery package is held on both ends by springs, greatly reducing that kind of uh, issue. 
and the springs that can obviously last a very long time. They're not kind of some thin little soldered pad. One final point here is we can look at part of the other issues in the wide angle focus, I should say focus, is that it still has a hot spot. And the idea of the wide angle is it's supposed to be just an even distribution, even disc of light. And that's because it has a uh, not convex enough. It has a poor optics. And we can see how flat that lens is as we compare it to, say, the Harbor Freight, which has better distribution. We can see that it has uh, more dome to it. And then this Dorsey, which can get super sharp, we can see is super domed like an eyeball. So it even has bad optics on top of all of its other issues. Tore that on the switch real fast so people can see what's inside there. It is this this weird little circuit when it actually has some capacitors and looks like a diode, a little power transistor, and a little chip that detects these button presses. And this is what's always drawing a little bit of power from your batteries, even when it's actually turned off sitting in your drawer. It has no conformal coating. A conformal coating is a kind of lacquer or clear plastic material that can be sprayed on the circuit boards to give them water resistance, make them more robust to harsh environments. And for a water resistant flashlight, you could expect that on a circuit board and it doesn't exist here. And for brevity, I just took it apart and now showing you here it is in all its constituent pieces, this little piece of plastic. Uh, this the front light is actually threaded in, but they upset the threads. Uh, ostensibly so it wouldn't come unscrewed. There's the two O-rings. It is on aluminum, a little aluminum socket. You can see how they pressed the circuit board in and it really got pretty well smashed. And just a, oddly, they had a second uh, system of contacts and a big spring for the outer contact and another spring for the inner contact, which seems a little odd, but it's uh, an opportunity for something else to interfere. But there's our second circuit board, our second little driver, ostensibly for these cobs. But that's kind of what the crazy thing is that there's actually two circuit boards associated. I'm going to actually just unsolder this panel and use it for some kind of project down the road. As far as its water resistance, I'm going to go ahead and call that absolutely false. Just totally, uh, I just don't see how they, there is any resistance at all. First thing, this front window here has no kind of CR O-ring. It's just a piece of plastic that sits in there like that. And then when the collar is on here, that's what keeps the window from falling out. No O-ring or gasket. So that's not water resistant whatsoever. On the front end, you have these two O-rings. This thing is what captures this whole sy system. That's the friction is those two little O-rings. And what can we see th through there? Light, a bunch of gaps. So water resistance, that's, I believe that's absolutely false advertising there's clearly no true form of ceiling and it's really pretty disappointing so anyway sorry for the really long video but this is like a rip-off product when you saw I saw just how many reviews and how many views some of those had and just how glowing so many of them were I'm like this is this is a, a rip-off product and somehow they really got uh, a bunch of social media influence on it. And man, real disappointment. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.